Frank Little made the city an offer they couldn't refuse. In 1894, Little, an insurance salesman, approached city fathers with a proposition. If he could sell $700,000 of insurance in town, he would donate 30000 toward construction of a new city hall and library. Although some councilmen expressed concern about the financing, it was hard to turn down such a generous gift. Once approved, Little selected the location and even picked out the architect, Harry Wilde Jones. As a young man, Jones had worked as a draftsman for Henry Hobson Richardson, the noted American architect from Boston. Jones opened his own firm in Minneapolis in 1885 and concentrated primarily on commercial buildings and residential homes. In his spare time, he was a professor of architecture at the University of Minnesota and a longtime member of the Minneapolis Parks Board. His designs can be found around the world, including China, India, and Burma. However, many of his greatest works can be found in Minnesota. Jones's design for City Hall reflects his time with Henry Hobson Richardson, one of the most influential architects in the country. His mentor's powerful personal vision, influenced by Romanesque castles and manor houses in southern France, can be seen in City Hall with its red pressed bricks, its many rounded arches, and the belt course separating the lower and upper stories. In Jones's plan, City Hall contained both civic offices and a public library, and the two parts were completely separated by a brick wall extending from basement to roof. Construction began within a few months, and Little was so enthused that he offered a new opera house to Northfield with similar conditions. But then the problems began, as Frank Little's insurance sales slumped. Work halted on the unfinished building while Little pressed forward, eventually mortgaging his house. But he could never come up with the final donation of $10,000. The city council debated its next step but finally authorized construction to proceed. It was a controversial decision, especially as the expense of the beautiful interior woodwork ran up. The editor of the Fairbow Democrat wrote, There is, of course, some objection to the expense that's been made, but we never built a schoolhouse or paid a teacher that it didn't cause a throb of pain in the heart of someone, but the great majority approve. The new City Hall and Library finally opened its doors on January 1, 1898, nearly three years after its exterior was completed. Although Frank Little was not in attendance, Mayor Keyes absolved the insurance salesman, saying, While some of Frank Little's methods have been subject of severe, adverse, and perhaps just criticism, in his dealings with the city government, he was at all times honorable and upright. Frank Little undertook the erection of this building in good faith and with perfect honesty of intention. We should, on this happy occasion, give him that full measure of thanks, which are justly his due. At the dedication, city leaders praised the beautiful new city hall as clear evidence that Fairbow was indeed the Athens of the West. This appreciation carried over to later generations, and in 1980, the building was restored, retaining many details from the original interior. <laughs>